segmentation session. Uh, so we're going to look at just the power of the segmentation tool, all the different inputs that we can pull into that segmentation tool uh, to, to build those send lists, um, to just have sort of analyze the data and look at some maybe some customer trends some buying trends, some behavioral trends. Um, and also, of course, the segmentation tool is the uh, is the brains of um, of the automation tool as well, the program builder. So we'll have a look at that. So, right, let's have a look. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Let's jump in. OK, look at that. Clever. Right. So as we know, everything uh, to do with our data is in the contacts menu. So if I go to contacts, my contacts, you'll recognize all this, obviously, the address book. So I guess the address books, of course, is where we store that data. But when we're looking at building segments, of course, you've got the segmentation section in the drop down or segments in the tab. So what's the difference between an address book and a segment? Well, effectively, an address book is stupid. It doesn't do anything. There's no function, really, you know, unless you or maybe your, your integration adds or removes somebody from that uh, address book the number of people in that address book is likely to remain the same whereas a segment is dynamic it's intelligent it's like a query or a search string or a filter or something like that and you can see here i've already got a segment i did earlier this morning with a client um who uh, you can see we can copy these things we can edit them so you don't have to start from scratch all the time and we'll see if we can come up with some ideas of course of how to use them so we're going to build a new segment so it's a segments tab contacts segments and then new segment okay you can hear the panic in my voice so um what we've got here is a bunch of templates really so as you'll see, the, the segmentation tool is so powerful. Often what's sometimes difficult is to is to narrow down what is it that I need to know? What am I trying to segment? So there's some really good templates here. They're just templates with a few rules in, so you can edit them, you know, add rules, delete rules and stuff like that. But certainly worth having a look at some of this stuff, you know, particularly some of the list hygiene um, stuff around here, you know, who's not opened an email for the last couple of years and things like that. So definitely have a play with those. We, of course, are going to go and build a blank template here. Okay, so if you like a bit of data, Merry Christmas. Uh, if you don't, you might want a strong coffee at this point. Okay, all right, let's have a look. So I'm gonna go for a blank template in my segment. So really straightforward, okay? There's two parts to a segment, really, the two key parts. Firstly, those contacts that we want to include in the segment, and then the contacts that we want to exclude from the segment. So include contacts that match these rules, then remove or exclude contacts that match these rules is going to give me my net count of how many people match the segment. So include these guys, exclude these guys. So we might have, you know, include people of this, these particular address books um, who uh, job title equals this and uh, average order value equals that, but then exclude anyone that's already purchased the product that kind of thing include these guys then exclude these guys gives me the net um, count so in the menu on the left are all of the different rules that we can use to build this segment effectively you're going to select add a bunch of rules apply those rules to the data and we get the count and then second by second of course that count is going to change so We'll start off, most segments really will start off with an address book rule, most of them. So if you want to use a rule, it's drag and drop, very much like the uh, the editor. So we drag in the rules that we want to use, include, exclude, wherever you want to pop it. Let's put it in include for now. So there is my first rule. You never forget your first. So we can click into the rule to edit it. We can duplicate that rule, delete the rule, and if I grab it by the grey bar, we can move it around. So just really like the like drag and drop functionality in the email editor. So let's jump into this first rule then. Click into the rule here. And it's a bit like algebra by drop down. So into my drop down. So I guess the language is sort of in this example, you know, we would like to include contacts who are present in any address book on the account not present in specific address books or who are present in specific address books so i'm going to start with present in specific address books there 
And what we're seeing here, of course, is every address book in my account. So remember, that's going to be up to a thousand address books. What it does remind us actually is, you know, think about the naming conventions for your address books because it's a big old list. So if you can kind of prefix it with different regions or business units and stuff like that, it makes life easy. So I'm just going to pick a few here. Let's do, um, actually, you know what I'm going to do? As I'm in, it looks like I'm in an e commerce account here. I'm going to pick some Magento address books because it can be any number of, um, address books um, we can select here and of course you can search for those address books uh, in the search function so I'm just going to grab those three address books there we go so that's my first rule include contacts who are present in these three address books now that's the first rule I can add up to 25 rules into a segment include exclude any combination of the different rules that we want it's just a single rule a maximum of 25 in total so that's my first rule. What I would probably do after each one is, is hit save or generate count. With the first one, you have to hit save anyway. Um, and that's, of course, going to save the work. But also what it does is it generates the count. So there you go. So it tells me I've got effectively 1,100 contacts that match this rule. And as I add more rules, I'm going to hit refresh count or save. I mentioned save because there's no auto save in, in the segmentation tool. So it's just good practice to do that. Um, so yeah and it's going to kind of update that as we go through so that's my start point then i guess the address books if you don't add an address book rule the start point is the account is everyone so you can do that as well if you like um so what i'm going to do then is then start thinking about data fields okay so remember you can create up to 400 data fields in your account so all the stuff you've got from your crm or for your e-commerce platform but then also you might want to create data fields you only use for email you know, so maybe yes, no Boolean fields for um, people that like particular categories of product or t different service lines and stuff like this. And we'll, we maybe talk about that as we go through. So I'm going to drag in a data field rule, exclude, include, wherever you want to drop it. I'm going to put it below that first rule. OK, so the first thing you notice is this, the condition, the and and the or. So it's this kind of the logic in, in the equation, if you like. So we can click between and and or. So I guess we want to include people that match the first rule or the second rule or people that match the first rule and the second rule. And we'll have a look at those a bit more later, uh, later in more detail later on as well. Right. Data field. So this is reliant on you having that data or at least having the data fields. So I'm going to show you a few tricks. Actually, You can you can use this to to enrich your data as well and we'll talk about that as we go through so these are all of my data fields okay up to 400 and they all work in sort of slightly different ways i guess so let's look at the different types of data um, that we might have so let's take a number field first of all average order value so this is a like an e-commerce data field i guess average order value it might be you know anything from annual budget number of kids number of rooms number of cars number of offices you know whatever it might be so i'm going to use this average order value um, examples okay i want to include contacts where the average order value is equal to not equal to is more than less than at least at most is empty so we can just look for data fields where they're empty show me everyone where you know first name is empty so we know that maybe you want to do a bit of data capture around let's have your first name or, or date of birth is empty so we can look for just empty data fields for gaps in the data but i'm going to go so what's this order value let's do at least let's find some big spenders and say hey so find me people whose average order value is at least oh come on i'm desperate to say one million dollars but let's just say one thousand pounds okay and there we go so now we want to include contacts who are in these address books and their average order value data field is at least one thousand and we'll keep going. I'll drag another data field rule in again, include or exclude wherever we want to pop that. And we'll just look at the rest of those data fields. So again, remember, we can change those conditions. Notice they, they toggle together and I'll, I'll explain how we can kind of work with that a bit later on. So data fields, then we've got number fields. Of course, we've got text fields. So I don't know, billing city, maybe or billing country, any text field. We say, OK, we want to include or exclude people where this text field value is equal to so let's say city london people that live in london not equal to people that don't live in london job title contains the word director uh starts with so postcodes and zip codes start with certain things again you know is empty or, 
or not this kind of stuff so we could look for through those text fields using those then we've got these yes no boolean data fields so ba, 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 ba. if anyone's ever done any training with me you'll know i'm obsessed with collecting data and getting dot digital to do all the work getting engagement cloud to spy on the customers and see what they're doing and record data and so yes no data fields are quite a part of that so we just want to say simply include contacts where the value in this data field is either yes or no and the biggie i guess are date fields we love a date uh, at dot digital in many ways but really it drives a lot of automation and we're going to do that with contract end date contract start date last order date date of birth um you know whatever it might be due date i was doing with, with some uh, clients the other day sort of sort of child baby things um so i'm going to find some date fields now rather than scrolling through i'm just going to use my search box there to search for the word date it's going to show me all my date fields and all the fields with date in the title so you see you know it depends on what you're doing of course we might have contract end date contract start date last logged in date um last order date's a good one let's use that okay so dates are 3d aren't they we can identify dates that are approaching in the future um uh, show me everyone whose birthdays to, no, ne next week dates disappearing off into history and then of course things that happen today so with a last order date i guess it's kind of retrospective so you might say okay i want to include people where this date does occur does not occur the anniversary of a date occurs so literally at the start of this week i got an email from i can't remember what they were selling that just said hello it's been a year since your first order what a great email i can't even remember it was now so it's probably not that effective but nice why not it's been a year since your first nice happy anniversary message um some guys i trained this morning who sell um robots believe it or not robots that do your lawn robots that that mop the floor hoover the floor clean the windows and we do this we're talking about this thing with it's like an anniversary like a birthday for your robot it's been a year since you've had your robot blah blah um anyway so we got all this good stuff i'm going to go with include context whose last order date occurs today before on or after a particular date more than so many days in the future or so many days in the past in the next in the last in between and so on so let's say last order date is more than i don't know 90 days ago maybe they're lapsed customers you know we obviously you've got to know what you're looking for with all this stuff so find me people whose last order date it occurs more than 90 days ago okay so you see where we yeah, we can find all those dates um if we have if you if you're looking for a contract you know contract end date or renewal date we're looking for dates in the future if we don't have that you know we might be looking for the anniversary of the contract start date to be within 30 days so we can find the dates whether it's working forwards or backwards so there we go so it's so kind of a lapsed customer segment i guess here show me people that are in these address books and their average order value is at least a grand and their last order was more than three months ago with more than 30, 90 days ago so this kind of stuff nice classic lapsed high value lapsed customer segment i guess um and normally in the real world i'd be hitting refresh count and save and then this count would be updating of course and obviously once i've got any numbers here i can go off and send campaigns to these people i could export them out um, if I want to, I can just look at the data and see who they are. So we can do a lot with the data um, as well. So that's my data fields, and that kind of is reliant on the on the data fields that you're bringing in. My advice: bring it all in. We don't mind. Four to four hundred data fields. Get it in there. So then we've got another type of data called insight data. Now this crazy town. So insight data is not those flat data fields. Uh, that we use for data fields so there's lots of different types of insight data so for e-commerce platforms we would do things like order data pulling through you know looking into those e-commerce e stores e-commerce platforms and looking at the, the orders who's purchased what and who's ordered this and ordered that um, for everyone things like web insight so we, i'm going to go through these of course where we can identify particular customers that have been to certain parts of the website amazing um if you're e-commerce again we've got cart insight so find people that have got certain products in their abandoned cart or a certain value of cart or all this kind of stuff. there's quite a lot of stuff there for insight um i'm going to do the two big ones which are order insight for e-commerce well not just e-commerce anyone that plums in order insight into their um their sales system and web insights 
So we're going to go with, and normally they are different um, blocks within within client uh, accounts, just because there's so many of them, I've got them condensed into one. So I would drag out, for argument's sake, order data or, or uh, web inside data. So let's have a look. So this is the stuff, right? So we'll just do a bit of orders. This is a bit, bit slightly more econ, but it's only the next sort of two, three minutes. So orders. So if you're plumbing your 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 sales system into uh, into engagement cloud, be it e-commerce or whatever, we we're looking into the, that history of those orders, all of those orders in that store. So we kind of look at it, look at them on a transactional level. So we start with the first drop down here. So we would like to include or exclude, I guess. Remember, every rule can be either, but let's say include contacts where the number of order records is greater than or equal to one, or in English, at least one. So, you know, if I hit OK here, it would pull through everybody that has ever ordered from that store. Now, we can make that different, of course, you know, more than one order, less than one. So you might be doing a loyalty program. We've never done a loyalty program before. Let's see how many people have got more than eight orders or seven orders and you could find those people okay right these are the guys that are at seven eight nine orders we could maybe message them and say hey just one more order you're in the gang you're in the loyalty program you know that sort of stuff really a, a transactional level but i'm going to keep mine nice and simple and we're going to show you that the, the filters and this is really where the clever stuff is so i'm including people that have at least one order but when we start to filter that data we, we can really get very granular so it might start off with you no know, well order from what store maybe you've got multiple stores that we want to look at so we say okay this this store or that store maybe regional stuff you know europeans or uh, us stores apac stores all that kind of good stuff more we could also look at oops also look at stuff like um you know people have ordered with particular delivery uh, demographics or billing demographics show me people that have at least one order and live in london or new york or paris or whatever um more likely it's about product so it's like products by name or a SKU code, or SKU code, or by product category is also an option in this list as well. So, you know, product name, product SKU. So SKU code is, is a product code. So we use that because it's pretty generic for everyone, I guess. So if I use the SKU code or the SKU code, so I'm going to say, OK, I want to include contacts that have at least one order where the SKU code was equal to this. Bom, bom, bom. So who's ever bought that product? nice and simple right now obviously we have lots of other operators here okay so sticking with the equal who bought that product if i put i can paste in up to 50 SKU codes in here just paste them in now obviously with equal it's only going to include the people that have purchased everything i put in this field so who show me people that have bought both of these products because it's equal to what i put in there um equal to you might do a couple of rules where you say show me people that bought this product then a rule underneath that says not equal to who did not buy this product. So now we start looking at gap analysis. Who bought this but did not buy that? Who bought the belt but not the shoes? Who bought the jacket but not the trousers? Who bought the, like today we were talking about these, these lawnmower um, robots, amazing things. Who bought those but not the accessories? You know, who bought the kind of stuff? So we can look for that gap analysis and identify what should we be selling to these people? What should we be? Um, uh, recommending as products what did they buy but not buy so, um contains SKU code i guess starts with is one of is a great one so let's just put a few and again you can paste the whole list of SKU codes in here you'll notice now this is line separated the one of so now i'm saying okay include people with at least one order of buying one of these products at least one of these products um so we're getting a group of products. who bought something from this range you can see where that might go um and then like things that one is really interesting, of course, is when did they buy these products? So we might want to find people that bought that bought certain products maybe in the last 30 days. We want to go back to them and say, hey, do you want some more? Is it good? You know, can you whatever it might be, get a get a review, recommend us, or just would you want to buy a second one? Then I was thinking about, so what about perishable goods or consumable goods, right? So it might, or things just with a certain, you know, life cycle, lifespan. So if you're selling any consumable products, I seem to be saying training a lot of people now with all this protein powder and all this good stuff and all that kind of stuff. So maybe you've got products that need to be repurchased where they need to replenish their stock. 
So you could do things like, okay, who's bought any of these products? And let's assume these products, I know that anyone that buys that product, that should be, you know, it should last 30 days. And then it probably needs some more. So vape liquid is one I trained recently, protein powders, you know, food, drink, etc., oil. Um, so we might say, okay, show me people with at least one order of buying one of those products, and we put a date on it, purchase date. So they bought one of those four products, and the purchase date occurs, does not occur, etc. cetera, um, you know, in the last 30 days. But for me, I'm going to go, uh, who's bought one of those four products, um, and the purchase date occurs before today by 25 days. Bang. So who bought one of those products 25 days ago? Now, that's pretty specific, right? But now I could say, you know, over 25 days ago or whatever. But now we're looking at people that bought that product exactly 25 days ago. Now, it's worth pointing out, like I said at the start, the segmentation tool where, where I am now, we're building send lists. And I'm going to build a, a segment I can send an email to it. But remember, this tool is the brains of automation, brains of the program builder. So if you imagine this, a really simple what a program does is runs things like this automatically and then acts upon what it finds. So if I ran a really simple program every day that said, okay, every day find people with at least one order of buying one of these products exactly 25 days ago, and then automatically send them an email going, hello, you're probably running out. Do you want some more? That kind of stuff. So think about like, you know, how we might use that for replenishment, for, for, for reselling anniversary products, you know, that kind of stuff. So what did they buy? What did they not buy? When did they buy it or not? And it kind of keeps going a little bit, I guess, with things like quantity. We see, so, you know, how many did they buy? We've seen this with a few clients where we say, okay, well, who are your big clients? I don't know. Well, should we see who's buying more than one? Most people buy one pair of shoes. Let's find someone at people that bought more than one pair of this category of shoe or this category of whatever. And suddenly you're finding people that are buying on behalf of a group or a team or a collective or whatever it might be. So who's bought, you know, more than one of these products or something? Um, and on and on it goes. This, of course, depends on really what's in your store, order totals, payments, stuff like that. But we're seeing really order information what has find me people that have or haven't purchased certain products when did they buy them how many did they buy what did they spend and so on so that's your order insight for any e-com kind of platforms this is obviously essential to find those buying trends and stuff like this remember this is one one rule out of the 25 i can add into this segment um so that's the one then we've got web insights now Web Insights is amazing. It's really straightforward, but everyone's got options for this. But I think all the new packages, sales packages you roll out, all have this as part of it. Um, a lot of people have it already anyway. So Web Insights, in, in layman's terms, me being the layman, by the way, I don't want to offend anyone, um, is using cookies. So with Web Insights, you get a bit, we give you a bit of code. You put that code on every page of the website, of your website, um, and then effectively, we're using cookies to, to, to track website behavior. So you, you put the code on every page of the site. Um, you can use things like um, Google Tag Manager and things like that. So you know, it doesn't have to be a big job for the web team. Uh, so yeah, do that. And then basically what happens is a customer goes to your site and we drop a cookie on their browser. Once that's on the browser, we then start to follow that customer around. Where do they go on the site? When do they do it? How long for? All that kind of stuff. And we're collecting that behavioral data. Now, like a lot of other cookies, that at that point, that, that data is effectively anonymous. You know, we recognize the browser, IP addresses, all that sort of stuff. But we don't know who it is, right? However, if your customer is in your engagement cloud data, uh, uh, database, your email database, and they are you're sending them emails and they're clicking links in the email to that site, we can then join up those two pieces of information. The web behavior, with the individual contact record so now it's not just 50 people that went to this page now it is johnny customer went to this page of my site on tuesday that kind of stuff right so that's broadly how it works i am not uh, an internet expert uh ba -ba -ba -ba. okay so if you don't see it in your in your account just have a chat with your, your contacts i just saw that message from from marie there um have a chat with your your contact at dot digital um and find out about setting setting that up um 
okay, but yes, it's all there ready to go. So Web Insights then. So we look at all this information. So we kind of use it in a similar way to orders. I mean, I can't think of one business that wouldn't use this, frankly. But so we start off at a transactional level. So bear in mind, we're only going to see people that have been to the site and have clicked links in the emails to that site. So we kind of marrying up that behavior. So it's not going to be everyone that ever goes to the site, but it's the people that match those two things. Um, so I say, OK, we want to include people where the number of web insights records now is greater than or equal to one. Who's been to the site at least once? And of course, you go down the route, who's been to the site more than once, twice, three times, whatever you want. But if I leave it there, hit OK. Who's been to the site since you turned on Web Insights and they've been clicking links in my emails? OK, again, where the clever stuff is, is where we filter. So firstly, off the bat, which website? Show people that we might have obviously more than one website. Who went to this particular website? So we can start with that. More likely, it's about where did they go? Oops. So let's go for uh, pages. So where are we? Page by title or URL? So let's go with URL, I guess. Obviously, you know, we, we will name um, name the pages as well. So you've got page names. Um, I'm going to go with URL. So it's OK. Find me people who went to this section. So I'm just going to invent uh, uh, a thing here. Oh, let's do this. Look, dot dot com forward slash training. So who went to the training section of this dot dom? Oh, that sounds a bit saucy. Let's go with dot com. Who were? Um, that sounds painful. So who went to the training section of this website? equal to like we said before exactly that but then of course you've got who did not go to this page so who went to this page but did not go to that page so who went to the page at the um sign up for our newsletter page but did not get to the thank you for signing up for our newsletter page so we can start to break down the process right who, who were we talking to yesterday oh, i was with um, a recruitment firm uh in the week we we're talking about you know who went to the um apply for the job page but did not go to the thank you for applying page and where do we find that how do, how do we build that gap analysis so we can we can find that here and remember we can use this when we build an automated program to go right bang they did they got to this this process broke down let's automatically send that person an email using the, the program builder um so who did or didn't go to these pages? You know, they might start with with a URL. So who went to the training section now rather than maybe the training landing page? So who went at least one visit of going to the training section of the dot, dot com website? Um, when did they go? You know, when did the session start? So people went to at least one visit of going to this page of my site and the session start occur, did not occur, you know, in the last, I don't know, seven days. So you can see, you know, how this is going. Who went to that section of my site in the last week? Remember, this is one rule. So the next rule might be who went to this section of the website in the last seven days and has not ordered anything in the last seven days. So that would be like an abandoned browse, wouldn't it? They looked at something on the site, but they didn't react to it. Um, so we can chase them, whether you're just going to identify the segment and give it to the sales team to chase or we're going to set some automated programs up or manual sends and, and send them emails to kind of push them over here. Um, so my background is recruitment. I did recruitment marketing for about 18, 20 years. Um, and so anyone that's ever had a call from a recruiter, you'll know how keen we are. Um, so yeah, so imagine this, I've got people looking at jobs on my site. They looked at jobs, they've not applied. Right, let's get on the phone and let's find out what's going on. Looking at our services, but they haven't inquired. Let's go and chase them. So probably less than seven days. So who went to that section within the last seven days? And so on, obviously there's lots of other options there um, that we might wanna do. And then, so they've been this section of the site in a certain time frame, which is pretty good stuff. But you might want to qualify that. You know, some of you lucky people, that might be thousands and thousands of people, right? So we want to qualify it a bit more. Okay, lots of people went to that section. So we could qualify by duration. Who's been to that section of the site in the last week? Um, and the duration of that session was, you know, at least, so greater than or equal to one. This is minute increments. So, okay, the session was at least a minute. And as you know, everyone looks, you know, Google Analytics and all that sort of stuff. You know, a minute's a relatively long time on a site. So if they've been to that on your site for a minute, they didn't just bounce off. Uh, they may have nodded off when they saw the state of the website, but hey, that's how it goes. But we can kind of qualify that. So, yeah, okay, they were on the site for at least a minute. So they probably were looking at the stuff. Um, 
So, and then we keep going, we want to qualify it more. Did they look at multiple pages? So, you know, number of pages is, you know, more than one or something like that. So you could really qualify if you if you wanted to, but the key bit is, is where did they go and when? So if you think about, I trained a, a very famous German car company um, a little while ago, and we were talking about this and say, you know, what are we going to do? So, okay, well, if they go to this, the car page is here twice in a week, maybe we'll send them some emails to kind of offer them test drives and stuff like that. However, if they go to two pages, and one of those pages was the finance page, how do I pay for this car? We want alarm bells going off in Dusseldorf. We want some emails going out. We want phone calls going off, alarms, because this person is thinking about buying. So you can really kind of drive that sales funnel um, by identifying you know, where people are on the site. Um, so yeah, now I like that bit. I'm sure you do. Where did people go on our site? Who were they? What did they do? There's another cheeky one on here. I don't see many people use it, but I think it's awesome. Is this bit, the UTMs. So it's all very clever. Where did they go on my site? They went here, they did this, all right. But what about where did they come from? So anyone that's doing pay-per-click advertising, if you're using your, you know, Facebook audiences, Google ads, all this sort of stuff, you know, we've got adverts going on. If you're like I am and tight as anything, I want to squeeze maximum value out of any advertising spend. So what about, I've got people coming through from Facebook to my site what happens then we know they came from facebook we get all those nice stats but how do we make sure we convert that in some way so the utm tags here will tell you of course we can identify people that came to the site from certain channels right so who came from facebook so we've got source medium campaign so we've got channel provider and the, and the campaign that they came from so any level really show me everyone that came from search or everyone that came from a social channel move it on to like uh oops source so it would be like who came from facebook who came from instagram who came from linkedin or you know, who came from google pay-per-click or who came from google organic search and then we take it even more granular which campaign if anyone comes to this site from this particular campaign we've just put on facebook i want things to happen automatically let's automatically send them an email back or let's move them into some kind of automated journey or just identify them um, so not only where did they go but also where did they come from which is quite interesting there so that's just a couple of those insight things orders uh web insights you've got cart insight all kinds of stuff there consent if we're looking at all the gdp gdpr consent stuff as well but certainly have a contact uh, conversation with your contacts there to see you know what's available to you what you, you know if you want any of this stuff but insight data amazing okay and what that brings us on to i'm just going to delete that rule really for some more space is i always think Orders and web insights are the first step on the behavioral profiling ladder, if it's a ladder. Uh, you know, so if I want to know, do people like a certain product? Well, if they buy it, I can assume they do. If they visit the web page for that product, yeah, maybe they do. So if we, if we use this analogy, I always use this in training, I sell cars, right? Let's pretend that I sell cars. So we say, okay, I want to find people that like certain cars. We sell lots of different types of cars. No point sending information on four by four cards to people that want a small family car. That's just, that's pointless. And they're not going to be interested. We're wasting everyone's time. So I want to identify people that are interested in certain things. So by people that have already bought a four by four, I can kind of assume they like those. If they go to the four by four section of my website, we can maybe make the assumption that they're interested in four by fours. That's kind of what, what they're interested in. And we follow that behavioral stuff through into the email as well. So we've got opens, find me people that open certain emails. So the opens rule, if I drag it in here, um, we say, you know, find people that have or haven't opened certain emails. So I'm like, okay, let's, um, so, find people maybe quite broad show me people that have not opened any campaign they were sent in the last 365 days so if you're thinking about cleaning up your data or list hygiene which is the awful way of putting it um you know find people that have been sent the campaign in the last year but they've not opened it do we want to get rid of them that kind of stuff so really simple sort of way to cleaning data but on a more positive note we might want to find people that have opened specific campaigns in there so now we see a list of every campaign in my account if it has a date it's been sent if it's not had a date it's not got a date it's not been sent yet so we can include future sends in the segments if we want to 
Uh, and by the way, we recognize and open uh, when the images in the email are downloaded. Now that's not perfect because obviously preview panes might open your email and download images, but the customer's not reading it, they just delete it. So that's kind of false positive. And then of course you've got the other way around when the images don't automatically download, which is 40% of Outlook users, by the way, do not automatically download images. So you get the images don't download, but the customer still reads the email, also opens the email. So that's a kind of false negative. Of course, if anyone clicks a link, we also obviously register and open as well, regardless of whether the image is downloaded. So that's kind of the, the, how it works with us at the moment. Um, so yeah, we might say, okay, I want to include contacts who have opened, I'm just gonna pick these top three here, who have opened any of these three emails, all of them, more than one of those, you know, more two of those emails there. And so I guess when we get to this behavioral stuff with the, with the orders, the web insights opens and uh, clicks in a minute, we're trying to we're trying to analyze behavior, aren't we? If a customer exhibits a certain behavior by clicking on a certain link, can we make an assumption based on that behavior as to a preference or a, an interest or something like that? So we're trying to constantly going, oh, I wonder why they did that. So we're analyzing those behaviors. OK, people that clicked you know, any of those three links in that email. Nice and easy. Keep thinking in the back of your head automation all the time. Remember, any of this stuff we're looking at, we're finding it out. It's fascinating. But remember, in the automation program builder, da, 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 which you've all got, we can go, OK, well, if this happens, let's do this. Let's send them an email. Let's add them to this series of emails. OK, so that's click uh, opens. A more reliable behavior in email, of course, is the click. Um, if only I could do a dolphin impression. So clicks, of course, you, you rarely accidentally click a link in an email unless there is some kind of interest or, 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 or sort of in, in that thing there. So we can be as broad or as granular as you like, really, in the in the, the clickers. So let's start quite broad. So we start for any campaign. So say, OK, we want to include or exclude, of course, uh, contacts that have or have not clicked any link in any campaign. So pretty broad, but by definition, you've got to open an email before you click it. It's an interaction, and we know they're alive, if nothing else. Um, but they're, they're clicking links in your email. If you want to do a bit of analysis on your database, you want to say, okay, okay, so who's really interested then? You can say, all right, show me everyone that's clicked any link in any email in the last six months. You know, that's all right. That's pretty engaged, right? They're clicking links in your emails in the last 180 days. That's not too bad. Um, so we kind of use it in that way. So like my background, as I said, is recruitment. If we And we all know sales teams, the fragile ego of the sales team, they need to be directed, they need to be fed warm leads to keep them going, give them some direction. So even on a cold day in recruitment, I could go into, into, into what was then .mailer, which of course is now is Engagement Cloud, and say, okay, just find me any clients that clicked on a link in one of our emails in the last two days. And I could just simply export that list out. There you go, lads get on the phone, this is a bunch of people that clicked on these links in our emails in the last two days. They, You know what to talk about because you know what links they clicked on and maybe they're interested. So really simple, I know it's a bit old school, but it worked for us. Um, then we get a bit more targeted, selected campaigns, right? So we go, okay, include contacts that have or have not clicked any link still, but now in selected campaigns. So again, we see every campaign uh, in my account in here we can pick them again so let's just pick those few there so include contacts that have clicked any link in any of these emails all of these emails more than one of these emails whatever so now we've gone a bit further we, we're now talking about people clicking links and so they're much more engaged and they're, they're interacting now with the campaign maybe that's a nice uh, you know automated program or a, a, a call list for a sales team perhaps and then the biggie is specific links of course so include or exclude people that have or have not clicked specific links in specific campaigns. Now we're getting big brother. So we see all of the campaigns again. The difference is now, because we've got specific links, we see the campaigns, but we get these bad boys, select link. So we go in here and bang, that is every link in my campaign. So, okay, who clicked on product number one? and or product number two, whatever you want to do. Back to the list of emails. Next campaign, okay. Who clicked on product number one or service number one 
in this email. Bang, bang. So you see what we're doing again, we're collecting those behaviors. I'm going to make an assumption based on that behavior that maybe they're interested in that product or service or whatever it might be. Um, so yeah, you see where we go in there with those. Um, this text here, as you can see in the column there, that's the name of the link. So when you add a link into your emails, you know, um, you give it a name. So make that name, you know, descriptive. Only you're going to see it, um, but it's worth kind of making it descriptive. So when you see it in reporting or particularly clear in segments or you know if you run a segment and then you export it out and give it to a sales team as a list of potential leads to chase that when you know that that describes that, that that link name describes what that link was pointing at so they got a better idea of what to talk to the customer about so it works on every level really uh, for that so yeah so include or exclude contacts that have or have not clicked any link in any campaign any link in selected campaigns or specific links in specific campaigns um, and the trick with clicks is remember you know when you design your emails obviously yes we want a shift product and we want to you know all this good stuff and educate the client and all that stuff but let's not forget a little bit of customer insight a little bit of spying going on remember if you want to know I don't know what might we do I'm trying to think of an, a nice easy example so cars again right so let's say I'm selling cars and I, I've got a bunch of people that have signed up for my newsletter, but I've got no idea what kind of car they like. If I send them an email, a really simple email that says, click here for four by fours, click here for sports cars, click here for family saloons or whatever, based on the link that they click, I can make an assumption to the cat on the category of product that person is, is going to prefer. So my next email, be it a manual send or an automated send, is going to be so much more targeted because by watching what they clicked on i can identify a preference or you know that kind of stuff so think of that when you're designing those emails how can we elicit response how can we elicit data or if they click on this if i want to know what your birthday is i can ask you to fill out a form well we all know what the kind of percentage of that is going to happen but if i send you an email that says oh you know which is your star sign or um you know click here to find out what happened in the you know i don't know in this month or whatever it might be if i click on capricorn you don't necessarily know when my birthday is but you've narrowed it down to, to a month to a capricorn period or if i click on january you know it's in january so by making me click links in your emails you're not only sending me to information but you're making me tell you things about me about what i'm interested in um so just a thought anyway kind of this idea of spying and all that good stuff is nice um so yeah so that's my link click spying i'll get shot for saying that um so we got all those things anyway um so we're including all this good stuff and, I, and as you can see that's pretty, pretty pretty clever um if anyone's using the preferences the marketing preferences as you can build um we can also drag those in they're very much like data fields um so we can say you know, include people where the preference is this or they said yes to four by fours and stuff like that so all of that good stuff is in here as well so they're the guys i'm going to include but then what about the people i want to exclude we'll just use a, a, a simple example here which one sends okay so i want to include the people that match these rules then exclude anyone that matches this rule so maybe exclude people who've been sent a particular campaign already you know bang they've been sent that campaign already fine so they've signed up or they've done the thing that i want them to do great but maybe another way around we might say you know what let's exclude anybody who's been sent any campaign today or in the last 24 hours or you know what three days whatever you want i'm going to do today so when you think now i run this segment when i'm going to send an email to it today you know now wherever we are four o'clock when i send the campaign it's going to include all the people that match that rule those rules but then it's going to exclude anyone that we've already sent a campaign to today through the system through for your account of course so we can just it's it's just a little way of, of over set you know avoiding any you know sending too many campaigns really um particularly with automation hopefully you're going to get a lot of automation going out all this sort of triggered stuff so nice simple things are, okay exclude people that are already clients have purchased something in the last day who've you know who've been sent any email already today and you can see how we can start to manage those sends the last bit of information i saw in the hitting the mark report that we do for the kind of all the email markets and stuff like that is that the average send from uh to a customer to a, to a kind of end end user end customer uh is four emails a week 
So that's the average send. So if you're not sending four, you're not over averaging your sends. Depends on your industry. If you want more information like that, by the way, you should go to, um, as an aside, as we're here, um, that kind of stuff. We produce this incredible report called Hitting the Mark. And it's on the login page for Dot Digital. So if you go into here, go to the login page, don't log in, go to learning and resources. And in here, like every, all these, this is where we save all of these webinars that we do, loads of documentation. The guys, I mean, genuinely, there's some serious experts um, in the business, not in the training team, but in the business. Um, and there's just so many documents there. Hitting the mark, this, there we go. And that's the APAC version. There's obviously one for each region. The information there is incredible. Breaks down email habits, shows you different emails, all these different customers have sent and why they work, how they work, all this stuff. So really good bit of information. Check the resources section out on the, on the login page. Anyway, so we're now in excluding these guys. So the final thing in, in the editor itself, in the, in the segmentation tool itself, are these things, the conditions. So we're going to talk algebra for a minute. Remember, we all went to Hogwarts. So you'll notice that when I click on these conditions, they all toggle together. So I can either have all like people that match every rule, the ands, or people that match any rule the ors but what about the bit in the middle the obvious one would be if you're targeting people in certain certain regions so i want to find people who's i don't know billing uh yeah so country includes uh equal to france and spain and germany and holland and britain so or sorry that's bad stuff on it or people living in holland or france or italy or germany or spain and their job title includes the word director so you want some uh, like some ors and some ands and the way we do that, if anyone's a fan of the Big Bang Theory or actually did algebra at school, um, if, if you picture an equation, you see the brackets. And so the brackets isolate certain parts of equations, right? So what we're going to do is effectively use brackets, but we call them groups here. They've, for the old people like me, they've kept brackets on there so we can recognize the picture if you don't understand the group. So if I want to use to isolate some of those groups, some of those rules are you use a grouping tool just lob it in at the top you can use either of them it doesn't really matter which one you pick and you, what you see there is i've now got a subgroup in include it's still part of include but it's like a little subgroup like a bracket in an equation right so if i drag in rules that's no problem if i move rules around remember we can we can move rules by grabbing that that gray bar then i'll just grab a few in there and you see here look now when i start to change those conditions it's only changing the conditions in the subgroup so i put a bracket around it or ring fence around it okay so i want people that match you know all of these rules or these rules now even these i can change if i go to that top one there you see when i change those conditions it's only changing the conditions that are outside of our subgroup so this is where we're saying identifying lots of people in different towns this or this or this or this or this and these so it's more like to look a bit like that um you can also have multiple groups so you're trying to find your different persona client personas stuff like that so if I, i'm just going to duplicate mine here but you obviously could create different ones so we're saying okay find me people that match any of these rules or any of these rules and so on so you can really get quite granular if you want to in there or it could simply be find me people include people in this single address book but exclude anyone that's already had a campaign today so it could be that simple just managing that over sending things so rather than send to you know address book number one which is of course you can do and that's fine we could just have a segment and drag in address book number one but use an exclude rule exclude anyone that's already had a campaign exclude someone that's already a client or whatever okay so normally you would hit refresh count after each rule to spot any kind of mistakes so please any questions shout them out put them through the chat or that or the question bit so we're just going to go back and have a little look at my segment section now there's some cool bits in here so there we go there is our segment it's good to go 1100 people match it so you'll notice we've got the last updated date here okay so these segments they don't sit there refreshing themselves or updating themselves every 10 minutes or something like that they refresh when we use them 
okay so when you send a send an email a campaign sorry to to a segment part of the send process is 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 refreshing the segment um but also so and of course if you if i sent an email to one of these that date and time would change because it refresh when we send the email but also we can do it manually so this one was done at 11 o'clock this morning so i could just hit refresh there and it's just going to rerun the segment there update the count and of course you see that it just updated the time and date as well so we can copy these things we can edit them if i go into the name of my segment i can see all those people da -da -da. i can export them out there so you know that might be a call list for, if we've got sales teams i mean, i can select them i can you know perform various actions on these people if i want to as well but another one is thinking about behaviors right let's say as i'm going my analogy of selling cars again arthur daly so i want to find people that are interested in four by four cars so i can send them some targeted marketing so i've ran a segment and i've said show me people that have been to the four by four section of my site show me people that have purchased four by fours you know i don't know more than three months ago show me people that opened my four by four specific email and show me people that clicked links to four by four cars in my emails all this stuff right so i'm kind of assuming based on those behaviors these guys like a four by four car so what can i do with that information i can actually automatically um, update the data fields for everyone in this segment at the same time if i select a segment here remember the more actions menus on every page definitely be nosy have a look in there um, i could find things like bulk update contact so i can take all of the people in that segment now it shows me all the data fields in here but i don't have a four by four do i of course i don't um, so what i could do is i'm going to do it really quickly now i can go and create a data field contact data fields i know we're going a bit off road here remember contact data fields you can create up to 400 data fields and i want to record what kind of car people like so i can create a new data field really simple i'm going to call it four by four four by four i'm going to make it a yes no data field i can create any kind of data field and i can update any kind of data field automatically but four by four and as a yes no means that people can have more than one kind of you know preference if you like so I'm just going to quickly create my four by four yes no data field. If I sprint back now to my segment, now I've created that new data field. I can say, right, everyone in here likes four by fours. And that's my assumption. I'm going to do a bulk update. And I'm going to, there's my four by four data field. I'm going to say, yeah, everyone in that, in that segment now, I want to change the value in that data field to say yes. I think they like four by fours. So we're enriching the data. Now I'm doing that manually. You can do exactly the same thing, but automatically in the program builder. The node that you would use is called the update contact node, but it automatically updates the value in a data field um, within a program. Got a quick question here. Oh, let's have a look. Right. Uh, so have a look, Christine here. Uh, I don't understand correctly that segments update automatically when using the send, so I don't need to manage it. Oh, good question. Sorry, I'm, I misled you there. So when we send, in fact, you know, what? I'll demonstrate that, uh, Chris, that's a good idea. So when we send a campaign and we're sending to segments, so let's go to this send here. Right. So we up, when we send the campaign, of course, we can choose who it goes to. So there's my segment. So let's pick a, a, some, someone's obsessed, aren't they, with them? Uh, Game of Thrones there. So if I'm sending to segments, as it, uh, the answer to your question, uh, Christine, there is if I'm going to send this campaign immediately, I'm going to hit refresh manually. I mean, obviously, they've been updated recently, but if you want to get bang up to date, it's going to refresh those straight away. So if it's a man, if it immediate send, then you would maybe hit refresh manually. If it's going to be a scheduled send, however, if I just scroll down a bit, you know, later on today or tomorrow, next week, you'll see that it will automatically refresh the segments on send. Now you can stop it doing that, um, but if not, it will refresh the segments automatically on send. So thank you for pointing that out. Yeah, so if you can do it instantly, and they're quite old segments, just quickly run down and give them a quick tap. If it's gonna be an immediate send or scheduled, you can. it's part of the process anyway. Okay, so I think for segments, that is 
itch um, in there. Um, but yeah, any questions before we, we turn this off? I'm just going to stop the recording there. So thank you very much for attending. Recording's off.